Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. It's never over. Hunting seasons are never over. Well, relatively speaking. Hey, you're inside Rack and Fin Radio with me, Tom P. Weekend of January 13th and 14th. Halfway through the first turn of the calendar page. Still a lot of hunting opportunities going on out there. Don't forget the backcountry, the striper season is closed out there. Is there some surf activity happening? I don't know, man. I've seen some, I saw some waves the other day. Oh, you're talking about like a Hawaii and Puerto Rico I, out of these waves. Uh, saltwater fishing has been on the downside. Still some white perch around. Hopefully we get a fishing report. If we can track them down, Captain Dave the Rave Show towards the end of the program with a white perch report. A lot of stuff happening. We are jamming. So grab that cup, grab that rebel. We'll be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. And congratulations out there to Jerry Vessels, Wildwood Fishing and Boating Expo last week. Grand slam, little brother. Good for you. Again, the weather crushed it a little bit later Saturday afternoon. We had a lot of people through the door, sold a lot of boats. Good for you. Even bigger and better next year. Who knows? We'll see. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. South Jersey's talk station. With savings at the Home Depot, we'll get your kitchen clicking. Top brand appliances like a GE Profile refrigerator with convenient features like a built-in dual dispense autofill pitcher. Plus, with seamless shopping in store and online, everything you need for your kitchen is just a click away. Get up to eight hundred dollars off select kitchen appliances from top brands like GE Profile at the Home Depot. Pricing valid January fourth through twenty-four. Gas ranges and dryers extra. U.S. only. See store or online for details. Jim Gaffigan here with some more straight talk. Let's take a moment to appreciate our sweet children, loving grandparents, and eternal soulmates. Now let's use them to save money on wireless. Because with the Straight Talk Silver Plan, you get four lines for just $25 a month with unlimited data and no contracts. So add those human pawns, I mean loved ones, and save money. Thanks, kids. They're finally worth it. Straight Talk Wireless, available at Walmart. Get four lines on Silver Unlimited for $25 per line per month, plus taxes and fees. For data management practices and additional terms, visit Straight Talk. This is South Jersey's talk station, WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Yeah, back inside, Rack and Finn Radio with me, Tom P. Into the second week of January. Hey, people, already, already, it's one day closer to springtime. Just a reminder here, yeah, turkey season is rapidly approaching. Uh, for application period for the spring gobbler season is going to kick off in a few weeks, January 25th, and it's going to run through February 22nd. Yeah, this is, um, seems to be good. We had a, a bump in the harvest last year, which was excellent. Numbers, uh, numbers were up, I would say, kind of, you know, kind of significantly from uh, a couple of years prior. And, uh, but again, division of, or I can't say division, the DEP's Fish and Wildlife, uh, Bureau of Wildlife Management Bureau, is undergoing what they call a wild turkey hen research study, and they're working along with uh, the New Jersey chapter of the Wild Turkey Federation, Penn State University, and University of Penn. Very interesting project, getting a, getting a track on the wild pop, wild turkey populations uh, north-south in the Garden State. Join us online right now, very special guest on Rack and Fin Radio. We can get him once or twice a year. Great guy. Is Jimmy Sloan. He's a senior biologist with DEP's Fish and Wildlife, and he's also the Upland Game Bird Project Leader. We're talking about this in really interesting uh, population. Has, how, how you want to call it? Research. Doing I mean, they're trapping the turkeys, putting these. I don't know. Jimmy's going to explain it. I'm looking at it saying, "Boy, I wish I was there to do that. I wish I was there to do that. I wish I was there to do that." Jimmy, how you doing, man? <laughs> Hey Tom, thanks for having me this morning. Uh, more than uh, more than a pleasure, Jimmy Sloan. This we talked about this project last year. Listen, for whatever reason, it was delayed. It is going full tilt now, and Jim, it sounds interesting as all get out. Um, going to again the genesis of this and what the uh, what the plan hopes to find out. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm just going to start off and say this is a multi state study. Um, okay. Pennsylvania, Maryland, they started two years ago. Uh, New Jersey, Ohio, and West Virginia are jumping on this year, and it looks like Virginia's jumping on next year. Wow, and this is all the encompassing, doing man. The, they're doing the same exact thing. Um, you know, we're just looking at factors that impact turkey populations, whether it be reproduction, survival, disease, habitat use, predators, and our management strategies. 
Well, Jim, the management strategies, uh, Jersey turkey hunting is some of the best in the mid-Atlantic region, if not uh, including the Northeast as well. Listen, like I mentioned earlier, in 2021, the gobbler harvest was 2,327. In 2022, it dipped down to 2,317. And in 2023, it bumped up to 2,545. Jimmy, the factors involving uh, the success of the spring turkey season are many, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, TSS shot has helped quite a few people. I mean, our hunters are getting better. And if you look at our pulse per hen, I mean, in 2021, we had 3.78 pulse per hen. That's flirting near the four, which you really need for population boom. And two years later, our our, uh, harvest goes up. I mean, that's usually how it works. Two years prior, if we have good pulse per hen, we'll have a great year. Well, Jim, go into the actual, the the process itself. I mean, listen, this is so cool, how they they get the birds. And, again, the whole thing with the hens, how big are these transmitters? What what information are they on? Go into it. Go, man. (laughs) Sure, sure. So uh, I guess I could start with where our study areas are. Uh, We have one study area in the north, one in the south. Obviously, these are chosen because they have different landscapes. Oh, yeah. Very different turkey population densities and very different harvest densities. I mean, South Jersey is the cream of the crop right now, and North Jersey is not. And it wasn't always like that. Right, Jim. Um, I remember way back when, when it started, those first uh, 10 years or whatever, North Jersey was the place to be. And now it's, uh, it, I see a lot of guys from North come South. It's great. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I mean, so I'm going to dumb this down as, as best I can. You know, we we pretty much lay corn on the ground and we shoot a rocket net over them. And that's how we catch turkeys. I mean, yeah, a little cracked corn, a little black oil, sunflower seed. Especially when it gets cold, the turkeys are in their winter flocks. They come in. We shoot a rocket net over them. After that, we put them in boxes. We separate the males and females. All all birds get uh, metal leg bands on them. Uh, I don't know if Lou Gambali has been on recently, but there's a little reward program with those bands for anybody who does harvest. Oh, right. A Tom in the spring or, or a Jake in the spring, and then the hens in the fall. There will be reward bands on them. Um I can't tell you what the prize is, but that's that's fine. So, <laughs> Listen, I, oh, sorry, sorry. this segment we're actually cutting early, a day early. We're in the studio Friday morning for Jimmy Sun. He's actually in the field right now, in the field right now, Friday morning at eight oh seven as we speak. I had to come in. I had to come in to get to dungeon because it's fascinating. And I've, I've watched some of these uh, trap netting, these, I call it trap netting, whatever. That's, that's a fishery term there, but the rocket netting in there. And it's, um, it's, pre- it's Jim, the, the reaction time of these birds is pretty freaking amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but it, it, it's no match for these Windstar rockets. It, it, oh, really? <laughs> I mean, it's impressive. It's impressive. Uh, yesterday, we actually had the film crew. I had uh, information education, Matt Henschek and John Carlucci came out, and we were going to actually film the rocket net going off over a flock of birds, but of course the turkeys didn't cooperate yesterday. They don't look like they're cooperating this morning either. So. <laughs> Jim, again, the, and, and picking the hens, the goal of this, uh, this is to what, just ascertain what effects a variety of factors have on the North and South Jersey birds? Well, central, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we really want to know, you know, we, we need to know about the hens. The hens are what is boom or bust for ground nesting birds. The males are cool. We love to hunt them. But the hens are what's going to keep these populations moving. Mm-hmm. You know, so hen survival, reproductive estimates, uh, you know, the median date and nest initiation and also incubation is super important. Uh, percentage of hens that nest one time, try to re-nest, nest success. Bolts and brood survival, um, you know, there's a ton of things that's going into this study uh, that I know will get out. And there, there's certain things that I have a feeling down the road are going to come out, like disease prevalence rates and how that, okay. you know, affects reproductive parameters and stuff like that. Now, what's the process of, of garnering this data? Uh, will it be uh, uh, for the spring, the summer, next year? The data that you're doing right now, attaching these transmitters on these select ends that you're catching, when does this all come to uh, something you can put down on paper? So my seasonal technicians go and track these birds. They download the data, and we send it off to Penn State. Um, and they spit us back everything. They're doing all the data analysis for us. Uh, Pennsylvania Game Commission worked that deal out. They're covering it. Um, 
So we're going to get quarterly reports. Uh, quarterly, beautiful. Soon we're going to have a lot. Uh, we're going to have a live web page on our website that's going to update. I mean, I'm going to try to update it every time I catch a turkey. Just let everyone know that we are trying. That sounds great. Joining us online is Jimmy Sloan, Senior Biologist, DEP's Fish and Wildlife. He's also the Upland Game Project Leader for New Jersey. Topic is, it's underway as we speak. It's the Wild Turkey Hen Research Study, uh, NJ Fish and Wildlife, New Jersey Chapter of the Wild Turkey Federation, Penn State University of Penn, and other states are involved, as, as uh, Jimmy related earlier. So Jim, this project's going to go on for how long? Uh, three years. So this is the first. It'll go uh, next winter and then the following winter, and then it'll end. I figure the transmitters will probably die out right about August of 2026. Okay, Jim. I, well, Jim, this is a, a great project. How um, how can the hunting and you know outdoor public get involved with this? Well, the, the biggest way the public and our constituents can help is to report these winter flocks, especially in North Jersey in our study areas. I mean, if you were in Sussex, Warren, Hunterdon, uh, Passaic, Morris, uh, if you're in any of those counties and you see a large winter flock, please report it to Fish and Wildlife. I don't know if you've seen our social media posts, but we did request that. Um, the easiest way is the email njturkey at DEP period nj period gov that's the easiest way and that way we can reach out to you and hopefully you'll allow us to trap the birds on your property we will release them right there i just need good winter flocks in north jersey jim i saw a pretty sizable flock earlier or later last week i was out um, by alloway uh driving there what's that uh route 40 straight out to route 77 back into their shirley road bowl and i said whoa there okay. they are and but there's the weight there are these you can see there were turkeys but they were right on the edge of the woodland there and i probably looked like a 20 30 birds i mean imagine there's bigger flocks smaller flocks but listeners any flock that you see get involved get involved especially if you're a turkey hunter and jim now what about the national the jersey chapter national wild turkey federation they're a, a pun intended big gun in this Oh, they've been awesome. They've been absolutely awesome. Um, anything I need, they're right there for me. Mitch Blake, shout out to him. He's handling all the disease stuff. Um, I need I need the thermal imaging cameras. Uh, NWTF stuff to the plate with that. Right. Um, anything I need. I need new boxes, they're right there. So I can't thank them guys enough. Well, John, I want to thank you and Fish and Wildlife. Again, listen, turkey hunting here is it's uh, it's just great. I mean, it's just great. And I, you know, I know guys that travel out of state, and this is great. Hunt. But Jim, uh, I've yet to hear really any kind of complaint about the turkey hunting here in Jersey. It's because, just up north. Oh uh, yeah, place yeah. I hear that's that's. And I understand. You know, from again, from from what it was, but it, yeah, listen, it's, it's the ups and the downs, and hopefully this uh, this this hen project will uh, avail some valuable information and maybe turn things around. Jimmy, thanks for your service out there. I know, I know, it, you're out there waiting for those turkeys to show up, so I won't bother you any longer, man. You take care. I, I appreciate it, Tom. Talk See you, Jimmy. Be good. Yeah, he's out there in the field as we speak. Okay, I'm getting some break. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. South Jersey's talk station. Bullet points. I'm Evan Brown. California's on-again, off-again gun control law is back off again. The state wants to enact further restrictions as to where someone, even with a permit and legally possessing their firearms, can carry their firearms. It was their way of trying to fight back over the U.S. Supreme Court decision in the Bruin case, which did away with strict no-carry rules in New York State. California's law would have allowed authorities to prevent carrying on sidewalks, for instance. But Second Amendment activists sued in federal court, and the judge ruled it to be unconstitutional. But the U.S. Ninth Circuit stayed that ruling while they reviewed it and now officially agree it's against the Constitution. California Governor Gavin Newsom's office calls the ruling dangerous. It's not yet known if the state will ask the Supreme Court to get involved. And those are your bullet points. I'm Evan Brown, Fox News. 
Here in New Jersey, it's one wow after another, after another, after another. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dan Zaro. Did you know New Jersey is home to more than three dozen craft breweries? If you love beer, you have to check out the Jersey Brews Trail. They have a free mobile guide to help you find a new spot to sit and sip. Not only will you enjoy New Jersey's most delectable drafts, you can earn one-of-a-kind swag, too. Sign up today and find your wow at visitnj.org. New Jersey, little state, lots Oh, wow. If you reside in a residential property in New Jersey built before 1978, your home may have lead paint hazards. Lead paint can be especially dangerous to children under the age of six. New Jersey's lead remediation and abatement program might be able to help. The program funds community based groups to conduct lead safe repairs for eligible households. To learn more, visit leadabatement.nj.gov. Ah, the sizzle of McDonald's sausage. It's enough to make you crave your favorite breakfasts. Enough to head over to McDonald's. Enough to make you really wish this commercial were scratch and sniff. And if you're a sausage person, now get two satisfyingly savory sausage McGriddles, sausage biscuits, or sausage burritos for just $3.33. Or mix and match. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Your health plan should fit your life, not the other way around. That's why AmeriHealth offers a range of affordable health plans. You'll get access to one of the largest networks of doctors and hospitals in the state. Plus free virtual care 24-7. You can even easily manage your plan with our personalized online tools. And when you need some extra help, our reliable customer service has your back. Compare plans and enroll now at AmeriHealth.com. A health plan for everyone. WPG. Talk Radio 95.5. Ooh, blog got posted. Hopefully, why? as I've just mentioned, a lot of winter hunting opportunities still around you after the first of the new year. That's, ah, you know, that's it. Uh, time to concentrate on the fishing. Uh, now you have the boat shows coming on. You got some of the sports shows uh, happening. A lot of time, thoughts are on the suds. Thoughts are on the wrecks. Thoughts are on the trout streams and the rivers. And speaking of, to, to sate that, sate that angling hunger, as we know, as, as it builds... Podcasts. Podcasts abound. And for the sand soldiers, as I respectfully call them, and the jetty jockers, there is a new podcast out. It, um, I guess it, it broke around on January 1st. It's already had uh, several great episodes. And one of the principals is Toby Lipinski. He is, I, just, I, I remember this guy when he started in the industry way back when. I said, look at this guy. This guy, man, he is going to be a go getter. He is editor-in-chief, Fishing Tackle Retailer, Fishing Tackle Industry number one trade publication. He also has a column, a regular column in Long Island Boating and Surf Casters Journal, and he freelances for a bunch of other publications. This is a surf fishing podcast. Check it out. And Toby's joining us on the line right now. It was 2011 when I first met this gentleman at ICAST in the Vegas days. I said, I was, what was that? I was a strand or... or um, no, Suffolk or, or Finn or one of them. And I said, and he's there with Mike Caruso and, and Hutch and the whole crew. I said, this is the new guy. He's from New England, Connecticut-based. I said, this guy is going. Okay, let's be. I said, this kid's going places. Asked me questions all over the place. I, I had to, to go back to my catalog copy that I wrote to make sure I didn't give him the wrong answer. He's on the line right now to talk about what is, from what I'm hearing, is one hell of a surf fishing podcast, Toby Lipinski. Honored to have you on Rack and Fin, man. Have you made the journey? Thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it, Peg. So, so here's the thing. What, I want to get the pronunciation. I used to live in northern Maine way back when. Uh, your partner on the podcast here, Jerry, A-U-D-E-T. Is it Audette or Audet, as we would say up there in Acadia land? It is Audet, but he is French Canadian. And there so, you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. We uh, might have Americanized the pronunciation there for you. <laughs> yeah, we we, uh, well, we refer to them as Acadians. Our great people. It's a hardcore outdoors. But Toby, get to the surf casting. There's podcasts everywhere. People are like dandelions. They come up, they grow, they flame out, they continue. Some you know, some are, are incredible. Some are uh, tedious. So knowing you, knowing your writing skills, your communicative skills, your personality, 
you. I don't know if I have the opportunity to meet or talk with Jerry. This is going to be a winner across the board. Uh, one of the guests you had, Shelly Karras, a legend in the surf, and still a legend in the surf fishing business. You have some great topics going on. This is a, this is a killer. What you guys just sat sitting around having a pizza and a beer and decided to do a podcast? A lot goes into this, man. Go. Yeah, so it, it, it came about, uh, geez, almost a year ago. Um, I, I, I'm not a big podcast guy, but I had seen or listened to a couple. And, and honestly, I, one of the ones I do listen to is, is, is Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which obviously has nothing to do with surf fishing. But it started to get me going that you know, uh-huh. there's a potential here for something, for a weekly program on surf fishing and Jerry and I talk all the time. We fish together all the time. So I said, dude, like, what if we started recording some of our conversations? What could we do with it? Would you want to do a podcast? So, I mean, we researched it and looked into it and started talking and and put some feelers out and realized there's not really an outlet right now. There's no podcast just for surf fishing that people can bang. check out every week. The Pinsky so bang. Said, <laughs> right. Boom. He said, let's, let's fill this void. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, so I mean, it's kinda, yeah, yeah. endless topic. I mean, this thing, and I, I, again, the one topic that always got me, even as a kid, the bio, uh, listen, there's a podcast about bioluminescence in the water. So that flipped me out, man. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> wanted to do, you know, stuff that we talk about. Like, we figured if the two of us could BS for 15, 20, 25 minutes on it, maybe others would want to listen to it as well. And, and, like, that's part of it, too. A lot of podcasts are lengthy, hour and a half, two hours, three hours. Uh, Our format is, is short. It's like we kind of want it to be one little quick subject, like we're just sitting around the fire, drinking a beer, talking about something that is on our mind, surf fishing related. You can listen to it on the way to the surf, on the way home, maybe on your lunch break, like real short form, quick, isolated topics. And Mm -hmm. that's, that's where we're going. We're doing three episodes of that a month, but then we wanted to get a little bit more, something a little special. Once a month, we're going to have a special guest on someone from the, the surf casting community. That's where we started off with shell. He was our first interview Uh, topic or or guest, I should say, right out the gate when we launched our first four episodes on January 1st. And we've got Steve McKenna, a longtime Rhode Island surf caster coming up. We did one with um, Frank Daniel, sat down for a couple hours. Uh, that was a wonderful experience and with Frank. Uh, we've got... uh, uh, Lipinski, proper pronunciation of his last name too. That was good. Go. (laughs) Well, you know, it was funny. I always said Dano, and he says it as Dano. So, okay, uh, close. Yeah, I always, yeah, I always know, said I, Denault. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't break myself from it as we were, we had, you know, as we were talking. He'd say Dano, I'd say Dano, but hey, it is what it is. But people mispronounce my name for my whole life, so I just uh, move on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, the subjects we're going to cover a bit of everything. I mean, it, it's literally whatever's on our mind whether it's in season and something happens that, that catches our, our eye, our ear, like the fire in the water. That literally came up because I had fished and had some crazy fire in the water experience yeah. one night, and the next day I was like, dude, let's talk about this. So that's, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about stuff that happens throughout the season, stuff that, that people want to listen to. I mean, we're doing a recording later today, and we're going to talk about Fishing metal lips in the big surf. For, that'll be coming out uh, mm-hmm. in about a month and a half now. So, you know, just sort of trying to fill a void we didn't see was there. And Jerry and I are, are good friends. We're fishing partners. We talk, as my wife says, too much. So we figured let's record <laughs> it and see if other, other people want to listen. <laughs> okay, Joe, on the line this morning is Toby Lipinski. He is editor-in-chief, fishing tackle retailer, uh, fishing, I, except for um, – Fishing, uh, what's it, international fishing, whatever, uh, based over there in England. This is the premier uh, fishing tackle trade magazine. You want to know everything about the fishing tackle business, the ins and outs. Toby's editor-in-chief. I don't know if you're going to have much hair left after this, Toby. Now, he's also <laughs> he's also co-hosting a podcast, Surf Podcast. It's available, Surf Podcast, surfcastpodcast.com, a new podcast regarding surf fishing and every aspect about it. Well, Toby, here's one thing I found extremely interesting. Again, keeping the format short, it's Entertaining to a degree, but the emphasis on the education, sharing the knowledge. It's not just two or three, which is fine if that's that's the format. Just sitting around BS and I'll be, yeah, remember this? What about that? You seem to be focused on 
sharing the knowledge, getting the the tips and tricks and techniques out there. And it's also as per your guess. Oh, certainly. That, that's something that I've always liked. And, you know, a lot of the, the writing I've done, the reading is I like a good story, but I like to have some some how to some tips. Sure. And, yeah. and you know, uh, it, stuff that you can pull tips from stories. So we're really trying to keep it that way and, and fun and entertaining while sticking to the subject of surf fishing. Well, Toby, the personalities are certainly there. You guys are vibrant. Again, I, I don't know, Jerry, but uh, just knowing your vibrancy over, God, well over a decade now, seeing your name is pretty much everywhere. Also, the fishing wire looked, Lipinski, wait a second, he was just a New England editor fisherman. Mac- oh, I said, this guy's going everywhere. So you climbed the ladder. <laughs> well, so one question, will you be having a podcast, not to put you on the spot, on distance casting in the surf, the value of it? I'm sure at some point we're going to discuss that for sure. We've got so many topics and ideas on a running list. I mean, that's why we figure we can do this every week because there's so many things to talk about. I'm sure if there's something people want to hear, we're going to touch upon it. And if they, if it's something we haven't hit, we're open to suggestions from the listeners. And I'm going to mention a guy. I'm just going to give you the initials. R.A. I've known him since 89. Last time I fished, we made a cast that still hasn't landed yet, Lipinski. And that was last year. I, I, <laughs> I know who you're talking about. Yes, I'm friends with him and Maybe he'll be one of our guests for sure. That's a good idea. <laughs> well, tell me the question. Will the podcast, will it be a uh, New England centric or mid Atlantic Northeast centric or can it pertain to the guys that are, are surf fishing down there in the Carolinas or down in Florida? No, absolutely. I mean, you know, Jerry and I live here in New England, so that's going to be where the majority of the focus is on. But Jerry spent a lot of time down in the mid Atlantic. He goes to Florida for a couple weeks every year. So we're going to touch upon Great. other is- locations. I mean, we, we just recorded one not too long about surf uh, traveling to surf fish based on the fact that, like I said, Jerry goes to Florida for a couple weeks every winter. So uh, you know, the focus will be northeast, mid-Atlantic, but there will absolutely be stuff that can be applied to other regions, whether the concepts can go there or specifically talking about other areas or having guests on from other regions. Perfect. Well, Lipinski, here's my well, – Toby, you never really uh, fish with me. Here's my pro- here's my proposal about surf fishing. You ready? We get there. My lovely Dee Marie with little, her little surf back, her eight-foot St. Croix, real lined up. She has some medals in there, some, a couple of plugs, some bucktails. She gets out. Okay, let's down. And she reads the – and boom, away she goes. Okay, away, away she goes. Me? Okay, where's the chair? Get the chair out. Where's the clam? Where's the bunker? Hey, oh, there we go. Ready? Okay. Okay, I'm hanging out. <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's my surface. I catch a fish here and there. But another thing too, Jeff, was she's become expert at uh, and always and I love it. She's always still learning, reading the water in the surf. It can change from week to week, mm-hmm. day to day. It seems, and it's uh, it's just so you have a huge billboard, white sheet of paper to draw on with this podcast. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things, like I said, when Jerry and I were talking about it, there's some podcasts that cover a little surf fishing here and there that we've come across, but there was nothing that we saw that got into it the way that we're planning on doing it. So on the one hand, it's great because we've got this open slate. On the other hand, we're not sure what is or isn't going to work, but so far, everything we've hit has has gone across really well. And uh, I, I'm yeah, I think we got a winner, and I hope everyone out, all the listeners out there, uh, agree. Okay, we are. Okay, Toby, we're up against a hard break coming up now. Uh, people want to tune into this, or there's a site, whatever. What's the deal here? How do people explore? Listen, surf fishing podcast. Toby Lipinski, Jerry Day, they're going to kick some ass. It's going to be a wealth of sand soldier knowledge, recruitment, training. You're going to just learn and improve. So, Toby, how do people get involved with this, brother? Go. So we got a website, surfcastpodcast.com, which has all the information right there. It's also available anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's also on YouTube. We went that route with uh, both sides, with podcasts as well as YouTube videos, because we want everyone to be able to consume the Surfcast podcast in the way that they want to. You know, I'm, uh-huh. I like watching the videos, even though I'm listening. Some people just want to listen as they're driving in their, their car or what have you. So we wanted to put it out any way you can. We were on Facebook and Instagram, the Surfcast Podcast. So really trying to make it easy for everyone to find us, to follow along, and enjoy the journey that Jerry and I are on every single day of the year. Well, this is, and you are going to pick up so many tips and tricks and techniques. And just, just again, still 
just the friendship of, of two hardcore surf anglers together, sharing the knowledge with each other, making each other and you a better angler in the surf, because that is one, that's one thing I've yet to figure out in my 138 years on earth, consistently catching fish in the surf beyond, you know, soaking the bunker to clam or to sand fleas. So, hey, listen, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be doing anything like with cut bait, you know what I mean? Because, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were just talking about doing a, a bunker, a chunk and bunker episode. I mean, we are going to hit it all. If it's surf fishing related, you're going to hear it from us. I tell you, John, one thing that, uh, that struck me uh, just a few years ago, and it really, well, everyone seems to uh, know about it now, which is great. You know, shared shared knowledge here. The effectiveness of sand fleas, the little mole mm-hmm. crabs. I, I'm ca- caught a bass, oh, Manilokan, Ortley, or see, I don't know, a couple few years ago. Looked like it swallowed a cue ball. It was a small bag. You know, <laughs> and uh, it was within, I, I had my bonus tag, you know, hey, man, I'm going to bring this little sucker home. Oh, packed with sand fleas. Now, what's a fish 28, you know, 27, 28 inches eating sand fleas? Those little teeny tiny things in vine. Mm-hmm. To me, it reminds me when you catch a summer flounder, as we call them down here, a fluke, and they're, you know, in the back bay and they're packed with grass shrimp. Hey. Yeah. You know, <laughs> or, or, or big brown <laughs> trout uh, with midges. So yep, that yep. whole bait thing, that's uh, that, that that's a science in and of itself. Oh, certainly. We use those little uh, mole crabs. We get them in Rhode Island. My son and I dig them in the summer. And <clears throat> we flip them back out in the water. We catch stripers. We get fluke, bluefish will grab. I mean, everything eats those little things. Let me tell you something, Bill. Just a little non I'm not a non sequitur, but I found some sobering information when I was speaking with Toby earlier in the week. This boy's 11 years old. I remember when he was still in diapers. Jerry, where did, <laughs> Toby, where did it go? <laughs> I have no idea. He he is growing up, and uh, he's my little fishing partner. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, just just to put you on the spot here, Lipinski, up where, okay, we're getting a heartbreak. Uh, you do any uh, sweet water stuff? Absolutely. I, I haven't had a chance in the last geez, week or two to get out, but I'm absolutely targeting the trout. I love, I got into trout fly fishing the last couple of years, and uh, that's sort of my little uh, hidden secret. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 fly fishing the surf, Lipinski, putting you on the spot. What do you got? Uh, I, I started that the last year as well. I've been messing around trying to get some fish on the fly, and that, that's a that's a subject we're going to talk about: bucking the traditions of surf fly fishing. Listen, <laughs> check out the Surf Fishing Podcast, Toby Lipinski, Jerry O'Day. It's going to be great. Toby, an honor having you on. Uh, congratulations on your slow but sure, and then towards the end, meteoric rise to the the, the top of the fishing uh, communication industry. Man, you are the cat's ass. Nothing personal. Thank you, Pag. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on here today, and uh, great talking with you once again. Now, listen, if you need a podcast about the finer points of setting up a chair and a sand spike and getting the bait and the beer out, I'm your guy. We're on it. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Toby. Have a great uh, January, February, springtime. We'll see you sometime soon. Sounds good. See you later, brother. Toby Lipinski, great, great guy. What a podcast. You, you look, you see the podcast covering everything. Surf specific podcast, man. It is going to be a winner. Grab that cup, grab that red. We'll be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5 and the WPG Talk Radio app. Fox News, I'm Chris DeMeo. The U.S. launching a new strike against the Houthi location in Yemen. This coming a day after the U.S. launched a wave of attacks on nearly 30 locations in the country. A U.S. Navy officer who had been jailed in Japan over a deadly crash is released. He and his family say he suffered a medical emergency and was unconscious when he lost control of the vehicle. Prosecutors maintained he fell asleep and should have pulled over. In total, he spent 537 days locked up overseas and in the U.S. Fox's Kristen Goodwin. As the 2024 Iowa caucuses approach, candidates push for last-minute voters, braving freezing temperatures and a blizzard. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, she's hoping the cold weather doesn't throw cold water on her momentum. That's Fox Business's Grady Trimble in Des Moines, Iowa. America's listening to Fox News.
Your WPG Talk Radio 95.5 AccuWeather forecast for South Jersey. High wind warning in effect through early Friday morning. Wind advisory in effect through late Saturday afternoon. Coastal flood advisory in effect through early Saturday afternoon. Overnight, cloudy, windy, couple of showers. Widespread flooding, damaging winds and power outages expected. Low 45, temperatures rising to the upper 50s. Saturday, windy and mild, clouds and sun. High 58, falling to the mid 40s. I'm AccuWeather's Drew Shannon on WPG Talk Radio 95.5. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Here we go, look out below. Back inside, Rock and Finn Radio with me, Tom P. Wow, mid January already, one day closer to spring. Hey, like I said, we still have plenty of hunting opportunities out there, especially when it comes to the white tails. Deer hunting, winter bow is still going on. You have uh, still some dates open and predicated on uh, your DMZ muzzle, permit muzzle loader and permit shotgun on a winter bow statewide. Ends the 31st, but in certain DMZ, DMZs, go to page what's that, um, 35, 30, 34, 35, whatever, in the digest, and you will see, guys, you can hunt until, whoa, middle of February, and various bag limits. You can uh, you can really load up. You don't have venison in the freezer yet, or if you want to donate it. Remember Hunters Helping the Hungry here in New Jersey? What an organization, selfless, hardworking, and they do a super job. They have an event coming up uh, 24, January 24th through the 28th. At the uh, Garden State Arches there, 110 Larison Road and Rice, and in conjunction with the United Bow Hunters of New Jersey. Shout out to Johnny Arnold and Jack Spotto. Hey, man. Joining us on the line right now is Bud Thomas. When we can get him on Rack and Fin Radio. Great guest. He's the treasurer of Hunters Helping the Hungry. That organization was formed in 97. Bud Thomas joined in 98 and has been there since he is their treasurer. We're going to be talking about uh, how much meat has been donated so far, how many families have enjoyed meals here of venison, quality venison from the goodness of New Jersey hunters across the board and the work of hunters helping the hungry. But Thomas, honor to have you on, brother. Happy New Year. Long time no talk to. Hey, good morning, Tom. How are you doing today? Uh, about just getting older and waiting to die, but that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but well, let's uh, one get into the the hunters helping the hungry. Just go over some numbers. It's listen, it's staggering the poundage of venison that has been donated and what this organization has done. At first, it used to be you had a, you know, hunters had to chip in to help the, with the butchers getting there. No, no, no. Now it's and Bud, you. You said it will continue as it's through through the 24, the winter season of 24, that unless a deer is under 50 pounds, the hunter, it, it's, the donation is free, correct? That is correct. And if the deer is under 50 pounds, then you pay the uh, the first $50 of the processing fee and we pay the rest. The butchers are getting $100 per deer to, dress them for, to uh, process them for the program. And where's this money coming from? Uh, a lot of it comes from private donations, and then we also got a grant from the Department of Agriculture uh, with the help of the uh, New Jersey Farm Bureau. Now, so I'm, that, I'm, I'm, no, but I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. The sh- <laughs> the sheer the sheer poundage of venison. You went to that place since the program's inception, and, and, and how are we doing for twenty three into twenty four? What's what's the uh, what's the meat situation? Right now, so far this year, we have 523 deer, a little bit less than last year. But um, usually towards the end, we get some uh, we get some township depredation hunts that, that really bring the numbers up. Beautiful. But so far, we've got 17,342 pounds, which amounts to 69,368 servings. Now, last year, the 22-23 season, we finished off the year with 1,050 deer. 31,881 pounds, 127,524 servings. But let me hit you this number, Tom. So I keep track of everything over the years since the beginning of, uh, of the program. So total deer, this is as of the end of last year, the 22-23 season. 16,692 deer donated. Total weight was 612,297 pounds. Whoa. Total servings, 2,452,188 since the beginning of the program in 1997. That is amazing. And, and, and Bud, you, you guys just you know, just keep it going. Uh, donations, grants, what have you. It's a, a tireless project, it seems. You guys just, just keep plowing away, and it's benefiting so many people, especially needy families. 
It is, Tom, and it's just a uh, a program that we uh, we believe in, and we keep going and and uh, keep going forward with it. Now, but what about this this uh, event going on up there at the Garden State Archers, January twenty fourth through twenty eighth? How do people get involved? Is there any cost involved? What's the uh, what's the situation? Okay, so with this grant money that we got, we purchased a truck and a refrigerated trailer that we can take out to. Uh, farms that want to do depredation hunts and park it there for the week, and they can hunt. And and this trailer holds up to twenty deer. So wow! What's going, Whoa! Yeah, oh! Yeah. So what's going on is we're going to park this trailer down in Garden State Archery, as you said, one ten Larison Road, right down to Jersey. And uh, UBNJ, in conjunction with Garden State Archery, is hosting this event from January twenty fourth to eighth. The trailer will be there, so anybody who wants to drop off a deer can drop it off in that trailer. On Saturday the 27th at about 6 o'clock, they're going to have an event. They're going to have uh, food and campfire out there. They're nice. Having a, um, yeah, they have like a, a mentor hunt out there. So they're going to have that. And um, last year we only had uh, five deer donated in the trailer. We're hoping to, uh, hoping to get the word out and get more deer donated uh, this year. Now, with your donation, anyone who donates a deer will get a free Membership to UBNJ for one year or a free renewal for if they're in UBNJ membership. Well, but for this event on the for the the day the twenty seventh, the, the the food and campfire donations accepted, of course. But is there any cost involved with that? No, no. Just show up. Show up at six o'clock. If you donate a deer, then uh, then you show up and. Uh, and participate. Join us on the Rackerfin line this morning is Bud Thomas, long standing treasurer of a fantastic organization, Hunters Helping the Hungry, formed in 1997 up there in Huntington County, and Bud has been on board since 1998. How do you keep it going, Thomas? How do you keep it going, man? Uh, just, you know, when you believe in something like this, you just do what needs to be done. And it's, uh, it, after so many years, it kind of runs itself, but, uh, as I say every year, I know I sound like a broken record. We still need more butchers. We would I was love just going to gonna ask you that. South Jersey, there, there's a paucity of them here in South Jersey. I, I, I can't figure it, man. You got some great no, ones I, down here, though. You got some great ones. Yeah, but the, the thing is, uh, our butchers have to be inspected by the state health department. And I think a lot of people that process deer uh, are hesitant to let the inspectors in, in their shop. Uh, if anyone is interested, we have a, we have a butcher that has been with the program since the since the beginning of the program, and he is more than willing to help any prospective butchers that want to join the program and advise them what they need, what the inspectors are looking for, well, how they have to set up their shop. Let me come down and visit with them and 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 talk to them and and just make sure that when the inspectors show up, they don't fail. But there, you just guys just had something going on up in um, actually northern central Jersey. Up there was it was that Huntington County to me north is you know the Sussex uh, Passaic um, right. Warren up there called a deer camp that looked yes. pretty cool. Will there be explain that and then are there plans to bring something like that down here to the southern tier counties of the Garden State? Yeah, this is something we just came up with uh, this past year. So we had this deer camp which we had. Uh, the butcher I was just speaking of, uh, Game Butchers, J- uh, JB Person at Game Butchers up in Lebanon. Yeah, Route 31. To, uh, yeah, yeah. He he went out to Growmark out uh, in Bloomsbury, and they hosted a this deer camp, which they did a deer skinning and butchering demonstration. And if they uh, also want to teach people how to properly field dress a deer, if they can get a deer early enough for there, they can do that. Mm-hmm. So that went over real well. It's at no cost to the, to the people who want to show up. And um, it, was, it was very well received. So we are trying to... Let's do it here, man. Come on, bro. Come on, to, buddy. I, was, I actually <laughs> contacted uh, uh, Jack Mihalik at, uh, at the buck stop. He's down there in, in Pitts Grove. Uh, in Pitts Grove. In yeah. Pitts Grove, yes. So he is... Uh, he was pretty excited about uh, doing that this coming season next year, so um, we're gonna we're working on that. And uh, Bringhurst Meats in Berlin is also one of our butchers, so I'm gonna contact them maybe today and uh, ask if they would be interested in doing something like that as well. Oh, but at the risk of sounding dramatic here, but uh, and I don't care what people think, about it, you're doing God's work, man. No, you're really you. you're Appreciate helping. It. You're you're. Uh, 
Listen, there's always someone worse off than you. If people bitch and moan about this, what about that? When you don't have it, even in the great country of America, still, whatever, America, there's still people that go and hung, that don't have enough to eat, especially with the families, and this goes such a long way. But but there's more that can be done. Oh, uh, yeah, there's always more that can be done. I'm, I'm glad to do it, and uh, I learned a lot of people at different venues where I set up a table, and uh, some people have have donated and they're very happy to hear about the program. Some people haven't heard about the program and, and really like the idea when I talk to them about it. And I've also run in two people who have been recipients of it and they're very thankful for it. There you go. It makes just makes you feel good. Well, but Tom's up against a hard break. Uh, you have a great 2024. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll see you guys in a few weeks at one of these events or, you know, maybe up there at Wrightstown. See, here's a, here's a problem, Thomas. <clears throat> when I show up, the property values plummet. So I have to keep well, it short. Cool. Yeah, I go in <laughs> and I get out. <laughs> I, I missed I missed you at the um, at the Jersey Fur Harvesters. Uh, I'm sorry I missed you. I was supposed to go down there, and something happened last minute. I couldn't make it, but uh, maybe next. Oh year. yeah, I was there. I was there annoying everybody. Ronnie Jones threatened yeah. to take me behind a trailer and skin me alive as a demonstration. <laughs> I'm gonna help him do that. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> bud, you take care, brother. We'll see you soon. I'll right. right. see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Rock it out. Everything. Yep. Yeah, still plenty of deer out there. Opportunities abound. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Are you ready for the fastest show on the boardwalk? Indoor auto racing takes over Atlantic City's Boardwalk Hall. Friday and Saturday, January 26th and 27th for the Napa Auto Parts Atlantic City Indoor Races. Experience all the thrills, spills, and the speed. It's fast and furious fun for the whole family. Walk the track and meet the drivers during Saturday's pre-race Fan Fest. Tickets available at the box office or online at IndoorAutoRacing.com. Don't miss the Napa Auto Parts Atlantic City Indoor Race. Presented by Belfort Property Restoration. January 26th and 27th at Boardwalk Hall. Ready, set, and roll. Registration for Atlantic K Community College Spring Semester is now open. Whether you're interested in business, liberal arts, e-gaming, nursing, or culinary arts, Atlantic Cape is the smart and affordable choice. You can even earn your bachelor's degree from Rutgers or other universities through us while spending way less or even tuition free with flexible online and in-person degree programs. Now's the time to see where Atlantic Cape can take you. Visit us at atlanticcape.edu slash register today. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Abvi. When something happens to your car, you might say, No! My car! But what you really need to say is something that can actually help. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And just like that, State Farm is there to help you file your claim right on the State Farm mobile app. So, just remember, like a good neighbor... State Farm is there. State Farm, Bloomington, Illinois. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. South Jersey's talk station. Closing it out this Saturday, Rack and Fin Radio with me, Tom P. But not before we get a fishing report. Yes, there are some white perch around. Join us on the line right now, Captain Dave, the Rave Show, Obsecan Bay Sports Center, 81 Natalie Terrace in Obsecan. The Prince of the Prince, I should say, of Perch. The Sultan of Stripers. He's the man who won the guy. Sorry, Dave, I get too excited. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> Prince of the Perchin. Um, yeah, well, who's the <laughs> the wicked witch of the winter? And it um, looks like it's going to dump on us this week, finally. Yeah. It's been, <laughs> December was, it's got to be one of the warmest December's done ever, but the wind didn't forget to blow. So it, it was a, it was, it had its ups and downs, but. Uh, the perch have been biting right through. Yeah, they they actually took a long time getting into their winter haunts. They they seem to be around now. Um, Good. But uh, I don't know. We got got the wind blowing out there today, yeah, and it the, doesn't look like it's going to stop until until after this. <laughs> uh, I I finally heard the word polar vortex used this 
this year, and it looks like um, looks like it might be here. Yeah, here's my problem uh, with the polar vortex. Listen, I love, I love the. I like it 95 and humid too. Show my salami skin here, but I like that one, you know, because I love to do my ice fishing, even if it's only for a week or two. But here's the problem with the polar vortex, Dave. The wind sometimes gets so severe it prevents ice buildup, and you're 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 hosed anyway, so you freeze, and then with nothing to show for it. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. But yeah, because it's yeah, you know, I'd rather have it warm and I'm and I'm still still out scouting for shallows for food. But the perch have been real good. They're you know, and this time of year, um, the key is to find that brackish water line that they love. It's somewhere's in all these rivers. Um, not not to get it too exact, but yeah, the middle of the rivers. I know I know that um, the Demolica is somewhere's around lower bank. Uh, you know, above yep. or below that, you get, and yeah, they like the deeper holes. I think there's spring holes in this river, and you go to Egg Harbor River, and it's somewhere's uh, a little below the power lines. That's a freshwater line, about, about right there, about yeah. Where the, about where the middle river comes in seems to be the, mm -hmm. you know, that that area. That's that's where to start looking and then spread out. And then Dave, they're also down there, um, in, as using the vernacular, uh, the accent in Tuckahoe, Tuckahoe Corbin City. All right, there's there's some yeah, well, spots they, in there. <laughs> oh, the whole yeah, the whole river. <clears throat> these rivers and and for whatever reason, the perch population has been on the increase. There's more and more bigger. I think it may be something to do with. There's been a few less, a, a few less fike nets in the rivers over the winter, which there yeah, you go. Guys, yeah, so people, everybody's got to eat. But yeah, these ain't, most of the guys with the nets aren't actually commercial fishermen. They're just they're yes. just um yes. quick, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah quick hitters you know if they go in there for a good thing and and it and a lot of days that there's no perch in the nets but when when the, when they make the run you know they they fill them up yep and don't oh, let yeah. them any of them ever kid you that they don't that's no lie hey cap real fast you have blood worms in stock um right at this minute i'm out there may be some coming today but with this with this yeah next week's freeze i I don't want to go because I will tell everybody that I just got a price increase again, and it's not something I can eat, especially in the middle of the winter. So yeah, they, they, good point. Yeah, yeah, they will be they will be higher when the next box comes in. Um, but if you hit the uh, buzzers, you, hit, that, you hit you hit the perch right. Hey, Dave, it's a perishable item. I get. I know the bait is perishable item like that. You have to you have to uh, you know be careful of what your expenditures here. But listen, you find those perch. Especially this time of year, the best eating time of year, Dave. To me, it's worth it. Oh yeah, and and you don't need you don't need a lot to get a lot of a lot of action. And well, grass shrimp's in another one. I haven't found them yet. I'm hoping that this cold does ball them up where they're supposed to be. They, you know, they, yeah, you know, with the with the water's been staying you know, close, you know. High forties, anyway. You know, they yeah. they're, they're out moving around too. Yeah, like I, start, I, else, I so. started to look on milk cartons to see what they look like. I haven't seen one in, <laughs> in ages. Okay, Cap, we're gonna wrap it up. You take care. Best of Judy and Kevin and the indomitable four or five pounds of sugar fury. Oh uh, come on, she's got a full eight, but she hasn't put on on an ounce since since her first birthday. So, <laughs> uh, unlike me. Okay, Dave, you take care, man. We'll see you soon. Okay. See you. Bye. I'll do it for this week on Rack and Fin Radio. God bless America. God bless our troops. God bless our first responders and law enforcement. Yeah, the weather sucks. It's going to be cold when it's winter. Okay, this climate change. It's winter. Yeah, climate change. Winter, spring, summer, autumn. And there you go. See you next week. Rack and Fin Radio. Plenty of deer. And you know, don't forget, you have coastal zone ducks, south zone ducks are going on. Canada goose still going on. White fronted geese, snow geese, Ross's geese. Yeah, and the quail, too. The quail, you can go to the 31st. The pheasants, you go under the side till the 17th. Hunting opportunities abound. See you next week. Rack and Fin Radio.